안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And finally, the wait is over. iOS version 16.4 was just released with support for an API that web developers have been waiting for a long time. Since long, long ago, Google has been pushing the idea of PWAs, Progressive Web Applications. PWAs are websites that look, feel, and act just like apps. They can be saved on the home screen and next to real apps. They have a splash screen. They have offline support. They can do almost what a native app can do. PWAs are possible because browsers are getting more and more powerful. Thanks on a big part to Google enabling the newest APIs on Google Chrome. But in a world where websites can be as powerful and can do almost as much as native apps, companies like Apple might feel threatened since the App Store is a billion dollar business. This is why Apple has been notoriously slow on implementing support for PWAs on iOS. Specifically, they have taken an extremely long time enabling support for a feature that can make or break a PWA. A feature that has been in Chrome since 2015. That feature is web push notifications. Until now, if you wanted to send push notifications to the iPhone of your users, the only option you had was to make an iOS app. There was no way around it. But since iOS 16.4, you can send notifications to the iPhone of your users directly from your own website. It is now finally possible to reach users on iPhone, Android, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Opera, and Safari with one piece of code, a marketer's dream. So let's see how this API works and how you can implement web push notifications on your own website. First, on our server, we will generate a public and a private key. These keys will be used to sign our notifications. We use signatures to authenticate our server with the notification servers of Apple, Google, and the rest. We don't have to generate those keys manually. Instead, we can use a package. In our case, we're going to use the Node.js web push package. But you can also find web push packages for Rust, PHP, Java, C Sharp, Python, and others. On our server, all we have to do is import the web push package and call the function generate vapid keys. We then console log the resulting keys that look something like this. It is important we run this code only once and store the keys somewhere safe. The frontend code is really simple. On the HTML, we have a button that says subscribe and we also have a JavaScript import. On the JavaScript side, we first have to register a service worker. A service worker is a tiny piece of JavaScript code that we can save on the user's disk. And that will run on the background even after the user leaves our website. It is on the service worker where we are going to listen for push notifications. And whenever they come in, we're going to display them. To register a service worker, we first have to check if the navigator supports it. If that is true, we just call navigator.serviceworker.register with our service worker file that contains this code. Here we are telling our service worker to listen for push events. When a push event happens, we want to get the title of the notification by accessing the event data. And then we call the function show notification to actually show the push notification to the user. In our code, we are only sending the title of the notification. But if we wanted to, we can send a body for more extra content. We can specify icons, actions, and even vibration patterns. Okay, so we're ready to receive notifications, but now we actually have to start sending them. To do this, first we have to ask the user for permission, and then we have to subscribe the user to our notifications. Back in our main.js file, we grab the button from our HTML, and when it is clicked, we wait for our service worker to be ready and then get access to it. Then we try to get the current post notification subscription because maybe the user is already subscribed. If the subscription is found, we should send it to our backend to save it on our database. If the subscription does not exist, we are going to subscribe the user to a new one. The subscribe function takes a user visible only required parameter that we should set to true. And it also takes an application server key, which is the public key that we generated in our backend 
a while ago. After the subscription is created, we should send it to our backend and save it on our database. It's important to save the subscription on your database because you will need it later when you want to send notifications to your users. Here is how a subscription looks like after the user has been subscribed. As you can see, it has an endpoint and a couple of keys. The endpoint will look different depending on the browser that creates the subscription. In this case, this is a Safari subscription, so we get web.push.apple on our endpoint. If it was Chrome, the endpoint will start with googleapis.com, or if it was Firefox, it would start with push.services.mozilla. If we now go to our browser and click on the button, we are going to get asked for notification permissions. And after we accept, we are going to be subscribed. Now it is time to send the notifications. On our backend, the code to do that looks like this. First, we need the keys that we generated on the first step. Then we tell web push about our keys. As you can see, I also wrote my email there. We write the email in case the push services need to get in touch with the website's admin. Finally, we call the send notification function, which takes two arguments. The first one is the subscription that we generated in the front end before you should load the subscription from your database. And the second one is the data of the notification. Here we can put a simple string or some JSON like this. If you decide to send JSON instead of a string on your notification, you need to change your service worker a little bit, where instead of doing event.data.text, you will do event.data.json. As you can see, when we run the code, the browsers that we have subscribed to will all show us a notification thanks to our service worker being active and listening. Done! We are now sending notifications to the browsers of our users. Awesome! But this code does not work for iOS, for now. This is because Apple doesn't allow just any website to send push notifications. Only PWAs saved by the user can do that. Thankfully, turning our website into a PWA is super easy. What we are going to do is create a manifest.json file and we're going to link it on the head of our website. On this manifest.json, we write the name of our app. We say that we want it to be displayed without any browser UI and we give it an icon to be displayed on the screen of the user. After that is done, on our Safari browser, we can go to our website and save it to our home screen. And as you can see, our PWA looks like any other app. When we open the app, we can click on the subscribe button and as you can see, we will get asked for notification permissions which we are going to accept. If we close the app, lock our phone and send the notification from our backend, we will see the notification with our icon on our lock screen. Awesome, and that's it. We are now sending notifications everywhere our users are without building a native app. We are done. If you found this video useful, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And let me know in the comments, what do you think about this API? And if you're going to implement it in your website, if you haven't already. And don't forget that if you want to learn things like JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, among many others for absolutely free, all you have to do is click the link below to join any of our many free courses that you can take right now for absolutely free with me. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onudo, Hamza Hago, Sananhago, Daumebayo, see you on the next one. Bye bye.